All of our phones have this long press functionality where you hold it down and then you turn on the phone or a laptop to reset, anything like that. What I wanna do is build a button with that kind of functionality. And I know we probably have to use capacitors. We did make that delay LED turn on circuit before, but now it needs to be button operated. Let's build a little LED circuit and see if we can get an LED to turn on with a delay press. So this should turn on when we plug it in. And what we need to do is basically add a transistor, I think, ground the transistor. And then what we're gonna do is, for the base itself, we're gonna put the capacitor in, in parallel with it, with the power supply, with the resistor pulling up from the power. So I'm gonna use a 100,000 ohm resistor to really slow down the charging of the capacitor. And then we're going to, in parallel, connect it to the base of this transistor and to our capacitor. So there's our capacitor. I'm gonna add a small pull down resistor to the capacitor, 1,000 ohms. And then now what we need to do is basically just connect this junction to the base so that the resistor can go through the capacitor or can also go into the base. All right, so I think this should work. Let's turn it on and see what happens. So power's on right now. We can see the LED went out. So in this case, what happened is before the base could charge, the resistor had no other path to ground. It can't go through the transistor because the base isn't yet turned on because the capacitor is not yet charged enough. So the power is coming in and then it's forced to go through the LED. So this is kind of the reverse of what we want. The LED was on by default, then turned off. We want to have it flipped. So we need to add a small inverter to this. So we need to do two things. We need to add the inverter and we also have to discharge our capacitor. So to do that, I'm going to add another 1000 ohm resistor. And all we're going to do is plug in the capacitor to it so it can short against itself and just burn off the farads that it has or the voltage, I guess. So that's uh, discharging. Let us add our inverter. An inverter pretty much just has a transistor that is grounded. And then we need to add a power source to it, maybe a 1K so that our LED can be nice and bright. And then very similar to, to this one, we're just gonna put the LED in parallel with this transistor. So we can see the LED is on by default right now until we activate the space because we're going to take the signal from the collector to this base. So let's get another, maybe like a 10K. So let's put our capacitor back in. And now we can see it's off by default with the capacitor. So right now the capacitor is charging, 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 charging. And then the LED should turn on when the capacitor reaches a voltage that turns on the base. And there it is. And there's our power. All right, so we have a delay circuit going right now. And we can tune the delay based on the resistor that's charging the capacitor. So the more resistance we have is a slower it will charge. We can also adjust the farads of the capacitor. This is a 470, I think, microfarad capacitor. So now the question is, how do we turn this into a button operated system? What I'm thinking we can do is when the button is activated, then the current will flow into the capacitor. But the, again, the key, the key thing here is when I release a button, I want the capacitor to basically drop to zero immediately, which according to Quack, I'll put his comment, he said, we don't need to worry about rapid charging, discharging of the capacitor without resistors. So if this blows up, I'm going to, I'm going to go for Quack, but I, I trust what he said. So let us figure that logic out. I think we need a transistor. So we know that we have hundred K here and we know that we have a capacitor. I think what we need to do is basically have another kind of inverter setup where we have power coming to the transistor. In this case, I guess it's 100K. And then we ground this transistor. And then what we do is the button will just go into the base pretty much. So we need to add another input. Maybe we could add it down here. I'll just add a 1K here. I know it's, it's kind of high for a button, but that's okay. Then we add our button. Then all we have to do is bridge the gap. So when we press our button, it will activate this base. I think this might be in reverse, but let's try it out. So let's continue. We need to basically now reconnect our capacitor to now this transistor's collector and to the same resi the pull down resistor that we had. And then the cable that goes to the base needs to reconnect now to the capacitor properly because now we've shifted it slightly. So we need a slightly longer cable. Okay, so let's plug this in and see what happens. LED is off by default. And then it turns on. So I think this is in reverse. By default, the capacitor is going to be charged because this base is not activated. So the current from this resistor is forced to go through the capacitor and charge up, which will turn on 
uh, this base, which essentially turns on the LED. So we need to invert our button's input. And to really make sure that we see what's going on, I'm going to connect the oscilloscope. Hello. So we can see the capacitor charging there. And what I want to test, so once it reaches the value that turns on the base, we can see it turns on. And now what I want to do is test what happens when we press the button. So I'm going to press the button now. And nothing is really happening. Oh, the button. <laughs> I'm so silly. The button is not connected to any power. Plug in power. And let's try this again. Three, two, one. See what happens. Capacitor is definitely charging. Going up, up, up. LED should be turning on any second now. There it is. And now what we need to do is check what happens when we press our button. So get rid of all these cables. If I press a button, then it drops super rapid. And that's exactly what I want. So if I release a button, we see it climbing again. So this is basically in reverse. So we need to invert our button signal. And I think we're kind of there. Let's invert this guy. So what we're going to do is just shift him over, give him power. And then we need to get another inverter. Man, a lot of inverters. Maybe I'm doing like an overkill and there's a much easier way to do this. But the things I've learned so far are kind of leading me in this direction. So we know that our, our collector is going to be our output. And we also know that we probably need to add some resistance to this path. Let's add just a little bit of resistance at least. So what do we use? I have this 1K. Okay, so that's going in. And now what we need to do is ground our inverter. And then we need to just connect our button to it, pretty much. So we need to power up this inverter. And I guess we could just use a 10K for that. I have a 1K line here. I'm just going to use a 1K. Okay, so we press our button, which activates the base of this inverter, which gives it a cheap path to ground, turning off the output. So the output is on by default until we press the button. Since the resistor this is on by default, it keeps this transistor on by default, which saps all the energy from this resistor and makes it go to ground, not allowing us to charge our capacitor, which is going to be right here. So I think this works. So let's plug in our capacitor. Let's zoom out a bit so that you're not so close. So the oscilloscope will be here off to the side. All right, there's our oscilloscope. Let's plug in power and see what happens. So capacitor is staying low. We hold the button and nothing happens. Oh, <laughs> okay. I forgot to connect my ground. So let's just connect our ground, gray cable, bloop, bloop. Okay, try this again. Our capacitor is staying low. That's a good sign. If we press the button, we're climbing up now. Climbing, climbing, climbing. And let's see if the LED turns on. And it's on. Now, if I release my button, LED turns off, capacitor discharges quite rapidly. So if we're charging it, holding, 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 and we let go, it drops back down. So this is kind of what I wanted. This is a long press, and then the LED turns on after a long time. I probably should lessen the resistance on the capacitor because this takes forever for us to test it. But we can see that it works. Now, of course, the only problem is the LED does not stay on. So how do we solve that? I'm going to kill my light because it's just very annoying. And I think it's probably visible enough. And you could see this a lot better now. So if we hold, we can see it's charging, charging, charging. Going up, going up, going up, going up, going up. And then the LED should turn on any second now. And then we release, LED goes out, capacitor discharges. So the question is, how do we keep the LED on? To think about exactly what's happening to keep the LED on, like right now, what turns on the LED? This resistor turns off. So when this resistor is off, this inverter is off, and the power from this resistor must go through the LED. So what we need to do is basically have a feedback loop where the power that goes into the LED to turn it on also powers the base of this transistor, which is keeping off this resistor. I think that's what we have to do. So once the LED turns on, he himself makes sure that the resistor stays off by giving this guy, giving his power a cheap way to ground. So he wants to go through the transistor, but he can't. So he's forced to go through the resistor which keeps the LED off. Once this guy finds another path home, then 
Wait, I think I'm doing this backwards. When this resistor is on, right, when this resistor is on, LED is off. Once the LED turns on, we want to make sure this guy never ever turns on ever again. <laughs> so we're going to power up his nemesis, the base of this transistor, giving the power the path to the ground, skipping him, making him very sad. So let's pull a parallel connection from our LED and the collector here and the power. So a bunch of connections here. And it's going to go in parallel to the base. So as soon as this guy turns off, he will never be able to turn back on. And our LED will shine forever the way he wants to. So what do we need to do? We need to get, I guess, like a, another 10K, something with high resistance. Okay, so here's a new 10K. And we need to connect. Man, these connections add up so quickly. Let's just test and see if this works. So we connected the LED's output, essentially, or, or really it's, it's input, right? The output of this inverter to turn on this transistor once he's on. So let's try that out and see. Uh, power. Oh, power's on already. Okay. So if we press the button, oh wait, my button disappeared. What the heck? The magic disappearing button trick. Pew. So we're charging, charging, charging. So this is like, you know, long press for 10 seconds to reset your phone or whatever. And the LED should turn on any second now. LED? LED is not working. If I plug this resistor out. So this LED is somehow limiting our voltage. Okay, so I didn't do that right. So what is the other method then to make sure the LED stays on? I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of solutions here. I just thought we could use the tools that we already have here. What do we do? What if the LED itself just connected to the base? He could be the connection that we need, but not the one we deserve. Let's try that and see what happens. Because he he himself can just go through the base to the uh, to, to ground. Charging, 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 charging. Let's see. Still going up. Still going up. And he's on. Ah, but he still turns off. What? How does that work? He still turns off. How? Okay. So my method is not working. We could, of course, just have another power supply, but that just seems completely redundant. Another transistor. I'm not really sure. So we got the button press delay turn on to work, but to keep the feedback loop, a bigger challenge than I would have thought. We have a lot of transistors that have to turn on for this to function properly. First, of course, we invert the button so that we're able to keep this transistor on at rest state. So this is on at rest which doesn't allow the capacitor to charge because this energy coming from this resistor is going out to ground instead of charging the capacitor. So when we click the button, we're able to activate this transistor, sending the power from this resistor to ground, not allowing it to go into this transistor to stop the capacitor from charging. And then of course over here we have, what is this even? This is just controlling when the inverter gets power. So if connecting the LED output to this transistor's base doesn't work, I'm assuming because during discharge, this transistor is activated again, pulling down the collector, making this go out and pulling this down being a path to ground, I don't really know. But my point being that we have other transistors that we can connect to. So if we connect to this first one here to stop current from getting out on this resistor, that may work too so let's try that one so we're basically going to take the output and essentially have it simulate pressing this button that's the next thought so as he lights up he should essentially be pressing this button keeping this resistor off keeping this transistor off and allowing the current from this resistor to charge the capacitor keeping this transistor on which keeps this transistor off which then cycles again and again keeping the led on keeping this guy on keeping this off which keeps this off which keeps this on which keeps this on which keeps this off which keeps this on and then we we can continue going around right so let's try this out i mean it, i don't know why this wouldn't work but the other one i really thought would work too 
So we can see that the capacitor is charging. I'm pressing the button, pressing the button, pressing the button. And I let go of the button, as you can see, by accident. All right, so charging, 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 charging. All right, LEDs on. And I'm going to let go of the button and see. Hey, it works. Okay, so I will not lie. I don't really think I like my solution. I feel like this isn't the proper way of doing it. But mission accomplished. Now, of course, we can't turn it off, but that's, that's fine. You know, I knew that was going to be the case. So this is our beautiful long press circuit. I feel like there are too many transistors here. I don't know if I'm not thinking straight, but I feel like I am, I'm inverting so many things that maybe I can skip an inversion because you would think two inverters kind of cancel out. And we have an inverter here for our button input. We have an inverter here for our transistor input. And then we don't really have an inverter here. We need this one to decide when the capacitor charges or not. But it just seems to me like this is, it's its like overproduced, so to speak. Uh, but you know, this is a level that I am right now. Still definitely very much a beginner. Probably have left the novice stage, but uh, so this is, it's cool to be able to do this. I mean, two months ago, I would have had no idea where to start. So uh, this is looking good. So we have a long press delay circuit. So the capacitor, as we can see, is staying high. So we're also not discharging that capacitor. So if we remove this resistor, then the capacitor should tank. So I guess what we would need to do if we wanted to be able to turn off is we need to have some sort of switch that cuts power to this guy just momentarily. I guess it wouldn't be too, too difficult to do that. You know, it, it probably would be very easy, actually, now that I think about it. I'm going to try it real quick. Let me turn back on my light. I think, I think there's a really easy way to do this. What we just need to do is essentially activate this transistor with a button. And I think that's... That's all it will take, like a manual activation to stop current from going out of these guys. But let's add a button in here. We'll switch. This is in line with that base. Let's just power it up. So we'll add a, uh, a 1K just because I have that handy. Really, I would probably use like a 10K. I'm holding it down. Let's see if it charges. Did I move this by accident? I think I did. This is in the wrong spot. And as soon as we tap it, it should turn off. And it does. So we have a on switch. I need to really shorten this duration. And then we have a reset switch. Boop. Awesome. Cool. The reset switch I wasn't planning to do, but it did turn out to be very simple. All we're going to do is force this transistor to turn on, which turns off this LED. So this is great. Very useful, you know, in a lot of scenarios. And it's really nice to see how it kind of works. Now, of course, mine is probably very bad compared to the conventional approach. But it's kind of cool to have a hardware button that also has some kind of intelligence where it sort of counts some time before it, it turns on.